Hello, my name is Elisel Rodriguez, and this is Arianism Today. To begin with, I'd like to explain um, Arianism and what Arianism is and how we view John chapter 1, verse 1, which is a very important uh, verse for everyone. And so we're going to dive right into John chapter 1, verse 1. Um, Arianism, um, to give you a little background, is not... Um, Aryan Brotherhood, um, that is a different thing altogether. Um, they are a um, racist group that um, believes that the Aryan race is more superior than everyone else. And that's not what Aryanism is, not to be confused with anyways. <clears throat> Aryanism is a technical scholarly term of a faith that existed prior to um, 300 um, and really is one of the oldest um, versions or orthodox uh, Christian uh, faiths and understandings. So, <clears throat> um, and we'll get into that a little more, um, but in John chapter 1, verse 1, I want you to look at and see and teach you how I see John chapter 1, verse 1. So, first part says, obviously, in the beginning was the word, um, and I think one of the most important parts of this entire verse is the word was. So when you read in the beginning was the word means that the be that the word was at the beginning, the beginning of everything. So in the beginning was the word, although was also means that he's no longer at the beginning, but he is somewhere else. Um, he is at the present time. And when you say in the beginning was the word, that means that the word is no longer in the past. He is where he is right now. So that kind of takes away from the word being omnipresent or eternal. Talking about being eternally in the past. God, for example, is always, he's in the past, he's in the present, he's in the future. He's always around, no matter what time period. Um, but here it says in the beginning was the word. So it means formerly was no longer. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So the word was with God. And we know that in the Greek it's, and the word was with the definitive, the definite article God. So it was with the God or the specific God. Um, so, and the word was with the God. We know that it, that's the Father. And so the word was with the God, was with God specified. And so that means that he ceased to be up there with God at some point. Um, it, he was formerly there, but now, uh, or at, at, you know, at some point he, he wasn't with God. So there was a point when he wasn't with God. Um, so he was with God in the beginning. Um, and there was a point when God and him were together. But um, there's also a time when he, they weren't together, obviously, because of the was. Otherwise, it would say the word is with God. But that's not what it says. And then the last part of the verse says, and the word was God. This verse confuses a lot of people because they say, well, the Bible says that the word was God. So that means that that's who the word is, God. No, no, we're, we're totally missing an obvious word here. And that's the word was. Never do you ever or can you ever say that God was God. It's like, what do you mean God was God? That doesn't make sense. So we know that it's not saying that the word was God and is no longer God. That doesn't make no sense. But what it is talking about is in this clause, in this last clause, it does not have the definite article. So we know that it's talking about divine nature. So the word was in divine nature, but then ceased to be in divine nature at, at some point. And so you can kind of say, well, that sounds... 
I mean, if you don't, if that doesn't make any sense to you, um, this probably will. Um, be, when it says the word was God, if, if the word s continued to be God, if the word always was and will be God, it would say, and the word is God. But it doesn't say is God. The word was God. And it's talking about the divine quali qualitatively like God. We know that God is the God the Father is the Father of Jesus. And so in Arianism, this is what we believe. That there was a time when only the Father existed and the Son did not. And God was alone. Um, and that the first act that he um, did, the beginning of his creation, the beginning of the creation of God, the beginning of the, the, the firstborn of all creation, was to give birth to a son. That's the first act that God did, was to give birth to a son. So when God gave birth to his son, he made his son exactly like him. In other words, a way of saying it is that God made after his own kind. Whatever kind you want to call God, God made his son after his own kind. Just like a man would make his son to be human after his own kind. He's a human. He makes after his own kind. So when God births a son, he births someone after his own kind. He looks, Jesus himself, Yeshua, the word, looks like his father, looks like God. Is, is, his substance is that of what God's substance is. His everything is identical to God himself's um, being and, 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 and radiance. It says that he is the image of the invisible God. In Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 6, it says, Who was in the form of God? To be in the form of something means that you are not it, but you are in the form of it. So who is in the form of God? Um, and then obviously we know that he changed. The reason why it says the word was God, the word was divine in nature, the word was all of these things is because he became a man in verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, it says that he humbled himself and he emptied himself and was found in likeness of human, uh, of, uh, of a bondservant. We know that that's a human form. So that's why it says, and the word was God. And so you see in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, there is a, that says that he is the exact representation of the Father. Verse 3 says, chapter 1, verse 3 of Hebrews says, And he is the radiance of his glory and exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the power, by the word of his power. And so now we have God who is the source of all things, who is the beginning of all things, who is not born, who is not created, who has not been created, who has always existed, who is truly eternal who has given birth to a son, but his son has um, a lot of qualities that are almost exactly like his father. But one thing that he cannot give him is to have existed forever, to be eternally in the past. He is begotten. And that's why Arianism, when you study the early church fathers, the apostolic fathers, it's important for you to understand that when they say unbegotten and begotten, they're making a differentiation between the two. Unbegotten and begotten are two Aryan words. And people who use those words are making a differentiation between the two. John chapter 1 in the New American Standard. John chapter 1 verse 18 in the New American Standard says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. So, what I'm saying is, is that John, the apostle, is explaining that Jesus is a begotten 
God, does he mean that he is a God on the level of the Father? No. Does he mean that he is bringing Jesus up to the level of the Father? No. He is saying that he is begotten after the nature and presence and image and representation of the Father, and that he is made after God's kind. And so when he says the only begotten God, he's saying this this son of his is begotten and he is in God's form. And so he's using that word because there's really no other way of explaining who Jesus is at this point, what form he's in and how important that is without being able to say that he is a begotten God or a born God or a conceived God or something like that of the God kind, but not that he has the ability to exist without his father, that he has the ability to not be obedient to his father, not that he is not under his auspice or not under his sovereign rule. He is. Uh, obviously, Jesus says that I can't do nothing without the Father. I, I say what I, whatever I say, I say because the Father, you know, tells me to do so. So he's under the authority of the Father. So when you think about after um, Jesus is born, then God starts to create all the other things. He tells Jesus, let there be light. Let there be this. Let there be that. Let there be this. Because God has given Yeshua, the power, the ability to perform these things, just like God gave the power to Moses to part the Red Sea. He was obedient, and because he was obedient, the sea parted, and God made a way. We obviously know that he had to have faith for that to happen. And so Jesus lives by faith as well. When God says, let there be light, Jesus does whatever he's told, and it happens because he has faith in God to give him the ability to do those things. So he's dependent upon God and God's direction and God's um, leading him. And so um, to wrap things up, for Arianism, um, John chapter 1 verse 1, is that's how we take it. That's how we understand it. And it's very simple when you take into account the was is. Was, was, was. You never say the word was God, if God, if the word was God, to say the word was God, that would be blasphemous on a lot of levels. You would say, and the word is God, because it's it's a constant thing that's not going to change. You would use that word. But because you use was, or because John used was, he's showing you was in the form of God, was in the divine nature, although he is not eternally in the past, he is begotten. Um, but he does, he is given life from the Father. And so because of that, we know that all things come from the Father and nothing exists without the Father. And after Yeshua was come into the world, the Word came into the world, then all other things were created. The deep, the waters in the deep, the light, all these other things. So <clears throat> that's it for, um, for that. Um, feel free to give me, send me some questions or, uh, or anything. If you enjoyed this, um, feel free to let me know. Thanks. And you guys have a blessed week. Bye.